Hi everyone and welcome to today's workshop. Today we're going to go over how to make a simple project in Unity. So if you haven't already done so, uh, you need to download Unity. And you can do this by just typing it and download Unity, clicking here. And what we want to download is the Unity Hub. So the Unity Hub is very useful because we can play with different versions. So in some cases, if some projects you might want to develop, use outdated assets or outdated objects and things like that. And you might need an older version, so Unity Hub allows you to store all the different versions that you need. So you're going to click on this. And if you're only interested in just downloading the recent version, you can also choose this option, but I highly recommend the Unity Hub. And the Unity Hub looks like this. And again, this should be under Installs. You can have an older version or you can have the most recent version. And today we're going to be going with the most recent version. So to create a project, we go to projects and go to new. So this is going to pop up and you want to make sure that 3D is selected since we're going to make a 3D project. And you can store this and in a folder that you create specifically for Unity. And I have my folder labeled Unity projects. So we're going to go ahead and name this and create. Okay, perfect. Now here we are. And this is what every typical Unity interface is going to look like. And I have a video, it should be on YouTube, where I talk about the Unity interface, how to use it, what properties it has, and it's an in-depth video on everything you see here. So if you want to take a look at that before you get started on this project, that's completely fine. But I will go briefly over every single element, that way you know what's going on and how to use it. So there's typically six things. I didn't really mention the sixth thing in the previous video. The sixth thing is the console here, but I'll touch on it in a bit. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the hierarchy, which is just a list of all the objects on the current scene. So right now we only have two objects, the camera and the light. So of course these are the only two objects listed. If you wanna create a new object, you can double click here, create a 3D object. And to do this, you can also go to game object, 3D object, and create it in this way. And there's also this option here where you could also create a 3D object. There's a lot of ways to do the same thing, but the easiest way would definitely be just double clicking or right clicking and going here. So the scene is where you're viewing and creating your world or your project. So everything you want in your project, you should click and drag here or add to here. To navigate through your scene, there's a couple things you should know. There's the arrow buttons. So you want to make sure that you've clicked on the scene. This is the active window. So there's the arrow buttons to move from side to side as well as forward and backwards. The right button you can use to look around your object. And you can change your focal point. So our focal point is now centered and we can move towards that center focal point. And another very useful thing is the find key. So let's say you have a lot of game objects and you need to locate one. So let's say the camera needs to be located. You can either click here or if it's in the scene view, you can click on it as well. And you simply press the F key and it centers the object. You can zoom in using the up and down arrow keys. Another quick thing you should know is you can use this hand tool to grab and position yourself. You can zoom in and out using the scroll mouse button or just the scrolling on your keypad. Let me go ahead and recenter myself. And these tools here are very important for editing a game object. So let's go ahead and add a cube again. And with these, you can scale the game object in any direction. To scale it in unison, you simply click the middle square button. You can move the game object using this move tool, the transform tool. And there's a lot of key things you can do with this. And the game view here is basically whenever you're testing out your program, you're going to enter the game view and this allows you to navigate through your world and test out any code that you've done, look at any objects. This is just your testing site. 
And the game view view that we see is actually the camera view. We can see in the camera preview that this is the orientation of the camera. We can move this. And this is what we should see on the game view. So for the inspector panel, this is just all the properties of a specific object. So the cube property has these options, the camera, obviously we'll have camera properties. And it's just the properties of any, any object. And the project folder is anything uploaded or imported or anything you have in your project in general. This doesn't necessarily mean what's on the scene. It's very different from the hierarchy because the hierarchy just simply lists everything on the scene. This is just everything you've imported to your project in general. So you can import a lot of the game objects, but you don't necessarily use them all. They will be stored here. And it's also useful if you're creating some sort of game objects or if you're creating material, if you're creating colors, to organize them in folders. So this is where you would organize them. And the last thing I want to talk about here before going through everything is the console. So this is great when you create a script and let's say you want to print a statement whenever an object interacts with a certain type of object. You can create a print statement here so that you're verifying that your script works. Okay, perfect. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is have an environment. But instead of creating an environment from scratch, I want to import the environment since there's so many environments that are so well developed. They just look great, so we're going to use one of those, and I'm going to show you how to import it from the asset store. So the asset store is just a Unity store where there's a lot of assets you can either buy or get for free that are already developed for you, so you don't have to spend so much time working on an environment or working on a game object. There's so many options for you, so you could just focus on the goal of your project in general. So we're going to go to Window and Asset Store. And for this, you will need to create an account but uh, everything here is completely free. You should not be paying for anything and make sure to sign in to your account. So I'm already signed in here. And what I want is an environment. So I've already previously searched for this. I'm just gonna simply click on this. And we wanna filter out all, and remove all the 2D environments. And we also wanna remove any environment that cost something. So we only want free 3D environments. So to do this, we're simply going to go to filter, select 3D, and select free assets. And this is simply view results. Now the environment that I really like is this low poly environment, but feel free to download anything that's interesting to you. And this specific pack comes with three different environments. So we're going to go ahead and import this. And what this does is just download all the assets and packages to your file. And everything here should be selected. And we're going to select import. And if you see something that says download, you're going to go ahead and click that before. I already have this downloaded. So make sure you, you click on download, then import. And if you notice here, all the files and all the game objects are now on the project. So we're going to go ahead and close this access store. You can right click and close tab. So what I want to do is uh, I will select a random demo. And this is the environment that we will be working with. And you can also preview all the other demos. This is what these look like. And we will go with this one. So the next step we want to do is we want to add our player character. So our player character is, we won't necessarily see this player character because this will be in first person format. But we do need some sort of game object so that the camera can follow it around in a game object that we can apply certain scripts so that it can move around the scene. So to do this, I'm just going to pick a random spot. This is fine. Or actually, I will move next to the camera. And we will add the game object here. So what we want to do is we want to create an empty game object. 
since we won't necessarily see the player, we can make this an empty game object and it should work fine. Okay, next we want to add specific properties to the game object. And I'm going to rename this player. Just so we're aware that this is the player. And since it is pretty much invisible, if you want to find it, you can always use the F key or you could also select it as well and it will be highlighted. So let's go ahead and move to the inspector. So what I want to do is I want to add a character controller. So what this does is it applies specific properties so that when we script, we can enable this object to move. I also want to add a capsule collider and I will go over colliders uh, later in this video. But the colliders simply let us know when they've interacted with another object that has a collider on it. The next thing we want to do is we want to make the camera a child of the player. And this is because we want the camera to move as the player moves. And whenever you have a parent and child relationship, anything that the parent does, all the movements will be applied to the camera as well. So we're going to go ahead and drag this down. And this camera has a lot of properties that we don't necessarily need. So I'm actually going to create a new camera. Sorry about that. And because these properties will conflict with what we need to do and it will create some errors. I'm going to go ahead and delete. And make this camera a game object. Next, we want to correctly position the player and the game object. So as you can see here, the player is way below our scene. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to adjust it so that it is on top of our scene. Then we're going to need to place our camera inside our game object. And this is to give it the illusion that we are moving as a game object. So we're going to put the camera around where the head is going to be. Uh, and this is just because if you put it too low, then it kind of just looks like you're moving through the ground. We want it to be at a nice height so it looks a little more realistic. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And the camera looks almost positioned. I'm just going to go ahead and check all the angles. It's going to move it slightly lower. Also notice how the camera is viewing this hill. We want to go ahead and adjust it so that the view is not immediately the ground. So to do this, we're going to rotate the camera itself. And that's so much better. And we're going to save this. Again, it's always important to save your progress. And move on to the next section. For the next section, we're going to be scripting. So this is where we're going to introduce coding and if you don't have any experience in coding don't worry about it you don't really need it it's just adding a couple lines of code i'm going to run through everything and explain what everything is and what it's used for so what we want to do is we want to be able to move the player throughout the scene so if we test our game now we cannot move anything since we haven't programmed it to do so all we can do is look so we're going to exit game mode we want to add a script to the player that enables it to move around. And we also want to add a script to the camera so that we can rotate our view. The rotation will happen in the direction that the mouse cursor is looking at. So we can look up, down, and to its side. And the movement will be enabled with the arrow keys. So first, let's add the looking around script. So we're going to go to Add Component new script and I'm going to label it look around. Perfect. This is going to add an empty script and we're going to edit it in a second. So for this, it's important to have Visual Studios and Visual Studios directly links to Unity. So any changes that we make on the Visual Studio's code automatically get applied 
to Unity and you don't have to uh, close the app and open it every single time. If you're focusing on coding, all you do is you save the script here and the changes will be applied next time you click on Unity window. So when you first open Visual Studios, it should look like this and it's blank because we haven't opened any specific file. So what we're going to do is we're going to open file and we're going to search for the file in our directory. So currently this is not in the proper directory. We're going to go to our Unity Workshop directory. And the file should be located under Assets. It should be this one. And I talk about scripting and useful functions in the previous video. Again, if you want to go ahead and check that out, just to know exactly what functions to use, how you can edit your script to be better. But for our purposes, we're just going to add the script that makes a player move. Now I have the code loaded here. So the first variable we need is the mouse sensitivity, just so it's sensitive to every single movement that the mouse makes. Next, we are using the player body, which is going to be the camera in our case, and it will move the camera around, and rotation, which we need in the X direction. So in the beginning, we're going to lock the cursor in the center, and this is what this line does. And at every frame rate, we're going to get the location of the mouse X axis and then the Y axis. Once we have that information, we're also going to get the rotation of the X axis and the Y axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this information and apply it to the player body. So we're going to rotate in that direction and we're going to transform in that direction. And just a brief overview of these functions here. So the start function occurs once at every start of the project. And the update constantly updates at every frame rate. And again, I talk more in depth about this and about the libraries in the other video. So if you're interested in that and interested in the scripting aspect, go ahead and check that out. It's currently on YouTube. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to save. It's already saved. You can tell by the screen bar here. And the changes should automatically be applied here. So we notice that we have two new fields that we did not have before mouse sensitivity and a player body. If we go back to here, we notice that these are set to public. So whenever the variables are set to public, we can directly edit this in Unity. And this is adjustable just in case you need the mouse to be more sensitive. The script needs to know which player body we're referencing, so which game object we're referencing and which game objects we need to move. So we're going to transform the camera. It should be here. Perfect, and now let's test out the script. And one thing I want to note is that whenever you are in game mode, as you notice here, this is a different color. And this is because whenever you're in game mode, you can make edits to your script and you can make edits to your project, but these edits will not be saved. So let's say you're testing on different speeds, whatever works for you until you find the one you like. You can use it in the game mode and whenever you find something that works for you, you can exit the game mode and apply it to the actual project. And we saw there the camera wasn't really looking around and that's because we chose the wrong game object. So this is actually supposed to be the player. It's supposed to be transforming the player object. So we're going to search a player and this is what it should be transforming instead. So let's save this and try again. Okay, now this works exactly how we want it to be. So we can look around the scene. Now we just need to move around the scene. But as you can see, the mouse is moving within the scene. It's not really moving anywhere else in the project. And to exit, you simply press escape and you'll see the cursor again and you can exit the game playing mode. Perfect. So now let's apply the script to the player. So again, we're going to need to go to new script and we're going to call this movement. So 
So let's open this up and apply the code. Okay, so we have this code here. Again, it's blank. I'm going to go ahead and add our movement code and show you how it works. So the first thing we want to load is the game object that we will be controlling and applying movements to. And notice before we added this character controller here, and this is so that we can control this game object. And we make it a type character controller just because it has a lot of functions already associated with it and it's easier to implement the code. We're also going to add the speed at which we want to move. We also need to add gravity so that it doesn't float through the air and we don't necessarily need anything in the start function so this is just going to be a movement applied at every frame rate. Much like before we're going to need to get the input of the current x and z axis. And to move, we need this, this vector object to be able to transform right and forward. Then we're going to apply this movement times speed and time. And this makes the movement independent of the frame rate. So sometimes we have a lot of heavy programs. The program might run slower. So this simply makes it independent of the intensity and the frame rate of the program. And you also need to add velocity, which is just gravity times time. So again, making it independent of the frame rate. And this is going to be on the y axis. So this is going to be the forward movement. And that's all we need. So we can go ahead and save this and run it in our Unity. So let's go ahead to our movement script and select the player as a game object. The speed and gravity, I'm going to leave it as the default variables, but go ahead and change it depending on your needs. If you feel like it's too slow or too fast, you can make the adjustments here. Okay, now that we can look around, let's use the arrow buttons. And it works perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to edit in the game mode. So we're going to reduce the speed to 6. And now if you notice, we're moving slower. And once we exit the game mode, this is reset to what it was originally before we implemented the change. OK, perfect. So now we have a player that can move around the scene, and we need to add more to our game. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add different objects to the scene, manipulate those objects. And I'm going to show you how to create materials. So the purpose of this game is sort of like a treasure hunting game, and we want the player to be able to navigate through the environment and find a treasure chest. But before that, I'm going to add a cave-like area where the player can find the treasure chest. I'm going to go ahead and add it around here. That way it's a bit more difficult for the player to find it. So in order to make a game object, Again, we're going to go right click here, create 3D object, and we want a cube. So this is what the cube's going to look like. It seems like it's floating a bit. We're going to bring it down to the ground. Now we want to manipulate this scheme object so that it looks like a wall. So in order to do this, we're simply going to use the scale tool and elongate the cube as well as raise it up. And we want to make it slightly thinner. So as you can see, it's pretty thick right now. And that looks perfect. And since it's kind of on the bottom of the scene, we want to move it upwards. In order to get same sized walls, what we can do is we can duplicate this object. And there's two ways to do this. You can do this by pressing the Control and D keys. And as you can see here, it has made this duplicate object. And it's positioned in the exact same location as the previous duplicated object. So don't be alarmed if you don't see it. Um, if you see it here, then it indeed has duplicated. And we also want to rotate this duplicate object 90 degrees. And we're going to do this on the y-axis. 
Now we simply move it into place. And I'm gonna make sure it's slightly embedded so that way we don't see any corners. And let's take a look at this from the back so we can make sure we position it correctly. Perfect. And we're going to deplate this wall as well. So again, shifting, or what you could also do is right click this and select duplicate. Now let's move this wall to the other side. And I prefer to duplicate this object because it also duplicates the orientation. And it will stay at this 90 degree orientation. So now we want to create the entrance as well as the roof. So I'm going to duplicate this object for the roof. Control D. Shift it a bit more up. And this time we're going to rotate it on the Z axis. And we want to look at this from the top view. This will make it easier. Okay, perfect. So it seems like it's a bit too big. So let's scale it back. Okay, that looks good. So now we need our entrance and we're gonna duplicate this wall over here. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna repeat this process of duplicating game objects, resizing them and transforming them until you've created a door. And in my case, I created three panels, two panels for the side walls and one for the door. So now we want to add a material to the door, as well as to the walls. And for the door, I want to choose a wooden texture. And for the walls, I want to choose a cave-like texture. So to do this, we can actually Google an image. So we're going to Google cave wall texture. And choose whatever texture we find appealing for our purposes. So I'm going to select this texture here. We're going to save image. And call this cave texture. And wooden door texture. And this is perfect. And the neat thing about this is you can actually click and drag these to our Unity window. So before we do this, I want to create a folder for our materials and textures. I'm going to right click on Assets, Create, and select Folder. And I will label this Materials. Now, if you don't want any textures from the internet, you can also create a material with create material. And let's label this metal. So now that we have this selected, we can go to the inspector and select its properties. So if we create a metal texture, it will be gray. And we want to increase the metallicness. So let's say we were to apply this to our wall. Whenever we play the game, this would actually be shiny. 
So we're going to click and drag this to here, as well as the cave texture. Where can I actually take this? And it seems that the format isn't JPEG. So we're going to try and downloading this again. Save image as and make sure that it is a JPEG image. And perfect. Now I'm going to delete these previous images. So I'm just clicking the delete button or you can also right click and delete this way. And now click and drag your new images. And that's perfect. You should see a preview of what the image looks like. So I'm going to take this and click and drag to our object. And if you notice, there's a materials folder that automatically opens and it should have the cave material. I'm going to click and drag this to the door. and select it to every single wall. You can also go on the materials tab and click on the material itself. It's the same thing. It has the same effect at the end. And if you notice this tree is kind of in the way for us, so one neat thing you can do is you can select the tree. This is tree number two, 10 and go to the inspector and deselect it so it will no longer be active in the scene. And that way we can do what we need to do. And after we can reselect it and it will reload into our scene. So perfect. Now we have our cave. And what we want to do next is add lighting inside the cave. So the cave is going to be dark. So we're going to add a light inside, a couple lights inside. So we're going to right click on the hierarchy, go to light, and there are several different types of light. There's a spotlight, which is similar to a lamp or a flashlight. So it's emanating from a specific region and we can add a spotlight. And this could be where a treasure is located. So we can put a treasure chest here. And we want an area light. So an area light shines light through a specific surface area, and it's usually a square. And we'll locate this here, and we can edit the light properties. We can edit the color, we can edit the intensity. I'm going to have a 50 intensity. And we can see the intensity here. So that makes it very bright. I'm going to select three. And we could also do what also looks nice is a directional light. And with this area light, you don't see it until you actually render the game. So for our purposes, we're going to use this light here. That way we, it's actually visible to us and we're going to rotate this that way it faces the middle of our cave wall and i want this to have a foggy like appearance so i'm going to make it slightly gray and also increase the intensity to five or two is also fine. And now that I have my desired properties, I can duplicate this as well. Now it looks extra bright because there are two lights in this direction. Okay, now that we have the light positioned properly, 
We're gonna actually reduce the intensity. Since it is supposed to be like a cave, I think it would be better if we reduced it to 0.5. I'm gonna do this in this one as well. And perfect. Now let's test out, see how we like the lighting. So again, the purpose of this game is for the player to find the treasure. So it's great that we made the cave a little harder to find. And the player cannot currently walk through walls. So what we can do is disable the door temporarily. However, as we can see here, we didn't really label what each cube was, so it's hard to determine whether this cube is the door. So it is important to always label your game objects. So I'm going to go ahead and label this door. And these other cubes wall. And let's disable this door before we start. That way it's just easier and we don't have to do it in game mode. So again, let's try to find this cave and you can see it's slightly visible. We can change that later and let's enter this cave. So the lighting seems fine. We can see through this. It doesn't have that foggy effect, but it does have a dim effect, which is what we're looking for. And now we just need to place the treasure chest. So we're going to need to go to the asset store to download a treasure chest. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And again, I've searched for this before, but you can go ahead and type that in. We're going to filter so that it is 3D objects only and free objects only. And let's choose this animated treasure chest. I'm going to download, then import. And everything's selected. I'm going to close this tab and find where the treasure chest is located. So let's go to assets and we want prefabs. So prefabs are just game objects that have been set as default. So let's say you have, want a game object with specific characteristics, you want to be able to replicate and duplicate these objects often, it's a good idea to turn it into a prefab so that way you can copy and paste these objects or click and drag these objects with your desired characteristics. Okay, that looks good. So next we want to create some sort of script that interacts with this treasure chest. So whenever the player enters this cave and touches the game object, some sort of effect happens. So to do this, we, we can edit the script of the player object and we need to adjust this collider. So every physical object has a collider. Every rigid object has a collider. Rigid object is just something like, for example, a wall where it is literally a rigid, rigid object. I'm gonna go to this treasure chest prefab. Go to inspector. As you can see, it, it is rigid body. An important thing to note is we need to uncheck this gravity setting uh, because what happens is when it uses gravity, it falls through the environment and we don't want that. We want to edit this collider. Oftentimes you can use this so that objects don't crash against each other so that way you don't walk through walls. And we want this to be a trigger so that it triggers some sort of effect. We want to adjust the player's collider as well, so that way it has a bigger reach. I want this to be a trigger as well. And I'm going to make this pretty big and wide, that way we don't need to directly be on top of the treasure chest to interact with it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now let's modify the script. Now to modify the script, we can simply add two functions. And this will be the on trigger enter and on trigger exit functions. So these functions activate whenever you enter a trigger. 
and we can then tell it to display some sort of text or perform a specific action. Okay, so the modifications I've made is I've added this public game object, which is the door. Um, this is because I want the door to also interact using a collider. So whenever the player is in the vicinity of the door, the door will disappear. And I've added these functions here, which I mentioned before, on trigger enter and on trigger exit. And we're going to use the debug log function, which will print found here on the console. And whenever the game object has a tag of door, the door will be deactivated. And we need to include another if statement. So if the game object tag equals chest. So let's actually remove this print statement here. Now tags are labels that you can put on a game object that allow us to perform specific actions in the code. So we can identify an object using the tag and perform an action. So here we have an object that is a collider type and if that game object that is a collider has a tag of door or if it has a tag of chest then we can do something with this. So we're going to add these tags after. And I also added this here. So if you walk out of the vicinity of the chest, we're going to print the statement lost. So let's save this and add our tags. So first thing we want to do is we want to re-enable the store and add a tag. So we're going to go to add tag and there is no current tag named door. So we're going to go ahead and implement this. And we need to click on it again. Since we just added a tag to the tag list, we haven't applied the tag to the door itself. And we're also going to do the same with the chest. One thing to note that if we, since we are using a prefab, anything that we implement here, any changes we implement here, will be implemented to other prefab you click and drag. So if you were to click and drag another chest to the scene, and if it's also a prefab, it will now have the same characteristics. So it will also be tagged as chest. So we have that same uniformity and we don't have to apply it to every single chest we click and drag to the scene. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to player and make sure that we reference the appropriate game object. So here we need to reference the door. And let's see if we missed anything. Perfect. And we did not edit the door collider. So let's go ahead and add a collider to the door and edit that. So we're going to find. We're going to edit the collider so that it extends forward. And a little to the side. that should be enough space. We're also going to make this a uh, is trigger. And let's add a rigid body component. So this is needed if you're going to add a collider. You need to have a rigid body as well. And don't forget to uncheck the use gravity button. So now that we have this ready, let's test it out. So now you see that the door disappeared and we have this cool animated chest. So if you notice here on the console, we have lost the game object and we have found it, lost it again and found it again. Okay, I have exited game mode and it seems we have run out of time, but if you're interested on in adding special effects or doing something with the foundation that we have built today, 
let me know. You can email me and I will post a video showing possible things that you can do that will up this game and make it more interesting. And that includes adding enemies, that includes adding text, win text, maybe a win count for every enemy that you defeat, and all these neat things. So I hope you learned a lot today and see you next time.